today I'm going to remove the motorcycle 12 volt battery from the Suzuki which is underneath this cover. This cover I got from eBay a couple of years ago and it's doing a really good job. It's started to fade a bit. You know, it's a really good cover, but if you don't like insects and spiders, it gets it collects spiders underneath. Uh, if you live in a place where there's no spiders, you'll probably enjoy using it more. Anyway, so let's uh, remove the motorcycle battery. I meant to film on uncovering this, but um, I'm not going to take the cover completely off because it's a bit of a pain in the ass. So, um, <clears throat> first piece, now what you've got on a GN is, is one of these covers. Now with this bike, it's got a red tank and a black one piece, so it's not the original, it's not the original side cover protecting the battery. This is on the right hand side. Now with this, with this black cover as well, it's a little bit damaged, so I've had to put some masking tape. And what happens is, it goes over a little, a little piece here. Now this, if you, if you read this, it says pull. Okay. Now it's not hinged, but in there you should have a toolkit. Now. So here we are. These are the rubber grommets. They match up to these lugs. That's what they're called. On the side case. So, so that's straightforward enough. Like I say though, when you remove that, you gotta watch you don't break it on this tab because it's it's not a grom it's not a sort of lug and grommet there. It just goes down that little piece of plastic on this one it's broken off so removing the battery first we've got this rubber I might, actually I said you need something to sit on but All right, so I hope you caught that how I took that off there what it is is a little catch down the side and now what you can do oh, I've got a there's a tiny little thing that's been living See that? I mean, that's the problem with keeping a bike outside. Some sort of aphid or something. Right. That's a digression from the work in hand. So what I've done is just brought this battery forward a little bit. It rests in a little compartment. And we're going to need some tools. Okay, so the tools I've got is a PH3 screwdriver. And that'll go in this. This is the negative. We'll take that one off. Now the other tool you'll want is a, a 10 mil spanner. So there's a let's have a look exactly how that terminal works on this. It's a screw bolt with a 10 mil nut behind. So basically, if you want to watch your, your petrol tank, you can just put pop your spanner in there. Now I know I'm going to length, but if your battery runs out, this electric start, no kick. So if that runs out, you're going to be, you know, stuck. Unless your bump started, of course, but, you know, we're not, not technically. Now this little spanner I've got, you know, should just fit in your, in your toolbox. Now you don't want it to rattle around, so you shove some rag in there as well. I'm a little bit out of luck, because my PH3 won't fit in there, but you want to find yourself a small PH3 screwdriver anyway let's get on with it you could just keep that for you know side of the road then at least you could take it somewhere and get it charged all right 
Now normally if this was like fully charged you, you might get a bit of sparking at this point. This is dead this battery so I know, I know I haven't really got any problems. Okay so that's the earth cable, we can just top that out of the way. And don't want to lose your nut, you don't want to dent your fuel tank. I mean that's a nice copper nut that, so it's a, it's a good, it's a special part. And what I'm going to do is just attach that nut and leave it on, on the terminal, you know, while I go away and, and charge the battery. Okay, now, I was going to use the sort of GoPro style camera, and after my gripe in it ran out of battery. Now everything seems to have run out of battery now, so on the positive we've got a little plastic, rubberized plastic cap covering the terminal, but same setup, oops, the same setup. I need a pH3. And that one. That didn't actually need. It didn't need the spanner. Can be lucky, can't you? What it is is there's actually a, a small sort of plastic knurl that sits, which should grip. It should actually grip the screw, the nut. I'm gonna shut up there. Okay, if you want to shut up, shut up. Okay, here we go. That's off. Right. So you don't want to lose your your terminal nut and bolt. There are the pair in there. So terminal nuts and bolt. So what I'm gonna do is screw that back on there. Just a couple of turns. So I know where they are and they won't go. Missing if I get called away, you know, and you get halfway through something, you can hopefully return back to it. And that's why it's, it's a good idea just to film stuff, you know, because you can always refer back to your filming. And it helps you if you take stuff apart. Now, before I yank it out, there is, there's the breather. Probably can't see it, especially describing something that you, if you don't know what it is. The breather is this kind of hook shaped thing, which actually, so while the battery is charging, it produces a bit of hydrogen and other gases, and that, that vents it. So, so there's a breather, let's get it right there where my index finger is pointing, my four fingers just pointing there at the breather. Right there. It's that thing. And it should have a rubber pipe which take the gases harmfully all the way all the way out and it's probably ah there's the rubber pipe so next time when I put the battery back in that rubber pipe will get connected to it okay so what we could do is oh, well I'll just pop this back together <laughs> he says just put that back on there. and this is where we need more tools so the most important tool that you're going to want or need or have you know get your hands on is a battery charger this one it's a really old one I mean you know well it's over 30 years old so it's quite old as far as these things go and it's just I mean basically look at that West Germany so it's like pre-1989 uh, Although they probably still called stuff West German even after their unification. Right. <laughs> Total digression. Okay, this battery charger is. I'm a lucky guy having this battery charger. It does uh, 6 volt for the DT as well as 12 volt for motorbikes. It'll do cars as well. It's only 11 amps. And you've got a fast or a normal. So I'm just going to go with normal. And I'm going to leave this for hours and hours and hours. Uh, but you can usually you be able to try to start it off for about half an hour with this. It's just a trickle charger. So there's like loads available and probably eBay will be the best place for that. I mean, I don't even think this brand is still going, you know, whatever. Just another, another quick thing while, while I can catch the light here. It's a bit difficult to see. You've got the levels, you've got a low level and a high level and in there there's some fluids like a rocket you might just be able to see the fluids moving so you want to just make sure all your fluids are sort of within 
within the toler tolerances given between these two marks it says lower level upper level but I mean it, most batteries are different a lot of batteries these days they're not even see-through like this one you know and so you can't even see where the levels are you have to take the caps off and have a look and make sure it's like over the over the plates or whatever they're called but and this one's pretty good in that you can see where it's where the levels are I hope that picks up on the camera let's have a look through the camera on a close-up yeah so these are the tolerances upper and lower and it just has to be in there so nice and in the middle and while I'm expecting rain uh, tonight I'm going to leave it on charge overnight so I'm going to wrap it wrap, wrap. Back, back, back this back up. Which is okay, as long as it don't get windy.